Welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. With over 20 years of real estate experience and selling over 150 homes a year, Laura Sanders is the number one REMAX agent in the state of Florida for 2021. Join us each week as we discuss how to make money through buying and flipping homes to renting versus selling and everything in between. To, to join the conversation, call in live. 888-994-4995 Studio A Hi everyone and welcome to Making Money with Laura Sanders and I am your host Laura Sanders. Every week we talk about something that will help you make a little money, save a little money, or maybe just help you navigate this crazy world that we live in. So today we're going to be talking about why is it so hard to sell condos? So today uh, Don and I are going to talk about why is it so hard to sell condos? I'm excited to be here with you because I was watching, it's unfortunately the anniversary, I think there's probably a better term, of the collapse of Surfside. Yeah. Did that accident change condo sales in Florida? Yes. It definitely has. There's a lot of new rulings that are coming out. So number one is we're going to have to go to full reserves. Which means what? That means that your maintenance is gonna go up. Give you an example, there's a condo. I have actually two of them for sale right now. I just sold one and I have two more for sale in a place called Coral Gate in Margate, Florida. They were always the cheapest and the best deal ever for maintenance. It was like in the twos, $200 and change. They're still a great deal today. Their maintenance is in the low fives which I think is amazing. You're getting your basic cable, you're getting your HBO, you're getting your internet, you're getting your water, you're getting your exterior insurance. Um, a lot of people wonder what that means. Well, you still need a content policy to cover your contents, which would be like your refrigerator, your, your furniture in case like your house burns down or a hurricane comes in and wipes <laughs> it out or a surf site, your building collapse. So with that being said a lot of condos that were for a very long time in the fours and five hundreds are now in the sevens and eight hundreds and the closer you get to the beach the more expensive it gets so we've seen a lot of people's maintenance thousand twelve hundred i just sold one on the beach in pompano and their maintenance was a thousand dollars a month a month so what what typically would that condo have listed for pre-surf side versus, which is hard, right? Because surf size was around COVID. So the whole market changed within these past couple of years anyway. Right. So the price of the condos, you know, everything had changed in 2021. COVID hit us and basically we shut down around March. I think I want to say it's no, like March, March 18th, yeah. I think. Like right after St. Patrick's Day. Thank God everybody got their green drinking <laughs> in, right? So we closed down, down right around that time in March and it wasn't until January of 2021 that we saw a huge spike in home sales. And that was pretty much everything. People were just jumping on everything. So when Surfside did happen, that, you know, obviously then made the government, or I should say like, you know, cities, taking a closer look at what's going on with the condos. For example, if you're walking down the street, let's just say, and I'll say by the beach, and you look at a building and you see cracks in the building, that is a telltale sign that they haven't been through probably their 40 year because having cracks in like a 20 unit, 20 story building is kind of scary. Absolutely. So my favorite quote that a lot of people say to me all the time, and they'll say, I don't understand why we need flood insurance anyway. I'm on the first floor. <laughs> well, if a flood comes, what's you're gonna happen? You're on the first floor. Yeah, but if you're not on the first floor, it doesn't matter because if it hits the first floor, guess what? You're probably, the building might collapse. It's a good, it could. So that flood is still affecting you because a flood came in and it's, you see, buildings, even houses are not meant to withstand constant water, like intruding into the property. And so a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, I don't need flood insurance. Well, and what I, I think is really interesting is and again, this is just learning and knowing and been doing this for a very long time. But for instance, water, right? Like being on the water, a lot of people will be like, oh, well, I need flood insurance, right? Because I'm on the, the water. Beach, right? No, that's not the case because a lot of those lakes that we have, they're man-made. They're actually managed by usually the water district. So the water district knows like when we're gonna have high levels of rain, they'll, they'll go ahead and start to empty those, can those um, canals, those lakes so that they can fill again. So you don't really need to worry that it's gonna come rushing into the back of your house. But supply and demand on condos, has, well, 
I guess people... There's no demand. There's no demand and there's a huge Lots supply. Of supply. So the prices are going down. Mm-hmm. Price of HOA or maintenance is going up. Mm-hmm. How are you helping to mitigate and get well, rid of some I of these condos? Let's get this across, you know, on the radio or wherever, you know, we can get this out is number one. When you have a house and you have a pool and you have a lawn and you have internet and you have cable and you have all these expenses, let's just sit down for a second and let's add that up. You know, it's not like back, you know, back in the day when I was a kid and my parents paid like $10, $15 for somebody to cut the lawn. You know, I'm paying a lot of money a month to get my lawn cut, okay? So now you, you, you add that up. Let's just say, and mine's more than this, but let's just say lawn's $100, right? Okay, now you have your insurance. Insurance has a lot to do with why everything has gone up in price. Because insurance before, in Florida specifically, insurance before wasn't as bad as it is today, and now what's happening is, is a lot of the condo's budgets, maybe they called for half a million dollars in insurance for the entire building, and now it's like a million two. So they have to take that $700,000 increase in insurance, divide it by right. all the units, and that's part of your raise of insurance. So that's going across the board, whether you're a condo or a house. Right. So people have to really sit down and think about this, and I don't think people are. I think they go, oh my God, $700, that's a lot of money. Well, I guess if you have a house, if you don't have a mortgage, you don't have to have insurance, right? You can self-insure. Right. But it's kind of scary. But the con it's totally scary, right? And you're thinking the condo has to have insurance because it's not just you, right? Look at Surfside. Mm -hmm. All these other people are now dwelling there. So that's going up. Cable is usually included in right. internet. And sometimes they give you HBO, which is, you know, I, I don't know how much you're paying for cable, but, <laughs> and, and I think we <laughs> dropped, I think we dropped like the football package. Um, we pay a ridiculous amount of money, which is cable and internet, but still, I want to say we pay like almost $300 a month. And I don't even watch TV. You don't even watch TV. It's crazy. And, well, and then we still have our Netflix bill. Well, they're going, to they're going to streaming, and they're going mm -hmm. to want to start carving things out. So the prices are, of condos are coming down. Right. But How so many condos do you have for sale if people are mm -hmm. looking? Because you've got more listings. You know, we talk to real estate agents, and they say, I've got a property. I've got two properties. You tell me you're upwards of like 40, 50 properties at any one time. Yeah, it just depends. I mean, but, but that's I'm, what makes you so unique that people should really call you. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah. feel like when I'm do, you know, I, I know a lot of things like when it comes to especially condos and, you know, it, it's sometimes you having to explain to the owners over and over again, which I had one tonight. We were talking about it. I said to her, I said, you know, she said, well, can you find out who the other lender was, which happened to be Max, which was kind of funny, right? Who the other lender was on the other 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 unit. I said, I, I know who the other lender is. Well, why can they do it? And this one, I said, because they are putting down the required 25 or 30 percent to buy the condo. So is that across the board condos require a certain amount oh, down? No, that's okay. not. Th so, OK, there's a couple of things. You see this? I feel like we're like, it's a lot of information, it's a lot of right? Information. So first and foremost, right, condos. The association itself can have a requirement. They could say, we, we want a minimum of 20 percent down. We want a minimum of 15. If you go into township in uh, Coconut Creek, they're all over the place. 12%, what a weird number. 10%. Uh, Some have no minimum down requirement, which is great. Because if they have 10% in reserves, right, then we could go ahead and get them as little as 3% down. Wow. But that's the thing. So when you ask your, like, your, your manager or whatever and you say to them, oh, do we have reserves? They're going to be like, oh, yeah, we have reserves. But they don't know how to read their budget. They don't know what the reserves are. So like I have one where the president said, yeah, we have reserves. And I'm like, yeah, it's 5%. It needs to be 10% in the state of Florida. This doesn't go across the board. Like I have a lot of friends that are lenders and they're like, you know, you know, Florida is the only state that does this. So what would you tell and your client if there's not enough It had not nothing to do, just so you know, with Surfside. Like that was like a thing before Surfside. So first thing I tell people is if you're gonna buy a condo, First of all, you want to hire somebody that knows what they're doing. Because wouldn't you be upset if you put an offer down on a condo that, and you only had 10% to put down? And you go to put down 10% and you get past your inspection, which costs you $500, could be more or less, right? You get through your appraisal, it costs you $650, and now you're $1,150 out and you find out that they don't have reserves 
and that you need to put down 25%. You're out the money. You would not be happy, would you? So do you have access as the realtor? You can request the budget, you can request what's in reserves, what's needed before anyone puts anything down? Correct. So the only people that they'll give the budget to are the owners. So the first thing I say to the owners, even before I go on the listing appointment, okay. because one of the things about that is, is that they'll be like, oh, well, you know, how fast can I sell? I say, well, I need to see your budget because your budget is what's going to tell me like how fast you're really going to be able to sell. Because if it has reserves, then I know that I could sell it to somebody with 3% down, as little as 3%. Well, that's going to open up my buyer pool like True. tremendously. True. So what frustrates me, and I mean really frustrates me, and I mean really frustrates me, is what I'm going to tell you when we come back from commercial. <laughs> okay. I'm going to tell you what really, really frustrates me. Let's find out what really, right. really frustrates me. So check out Laura. our sponsors and we'll be right back. At JK Closing Attorneys, we do all of the same things that a title company does, but with the benefits of being a law office. We can help with residential real estate, short sales, commercial real estate, refinances, 1031 exchanges, and FRIPTA withholding. Contact JK Closing Attorneys today at 954-332-3111. Again, that is 954-332-3111. One, one. Whether you're buying, selling, refinancing, or building your dream home, you have a lot riding on your loan specialist. Max Fish, a top 1% mortgage loan officer in the nation, will give you a same-day qualifying quote. Max Fish is committed to providing his customers with mortgage services that exceed their expectations, ensuring that you make the right choice for you and your family is his ultimate goal. Contact Max Fish today at 954-729-6933 or max.fish at nwmcorp.net. You have been watching Making Money with Laura. For more information, contact Laura Sanders at 954-650-0827 or visit her website at thelauracell.com. And now back to the show. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Making Money with Laura Sanders. And I am your host, Laura Sanders. We are talking about, you know, basically, why is it so hard to buy a condo or sell a condo, I should say? And it's not easy to buy it either, actually. So I'm here talking with Don, and we're talking about what frustrates me. What frustrates you, yes. Yes, what frustrates <laughs> me. What frustrates me is agents calling me and asking me, can I do an FHA on the condo? What most people don't know about condos is this. If the condo requires you to do a background check, which I don't know any condos that don't, that is, a, that is something that FHA does not allow in order to be able to um, approve a, a, that, that kind of loan for a condo. So unless it's like a really small condo that doesn't require a background check, because they find that to be like basically um, a violation, like a discrimination. So they used to, two years ago, have something called, and half these agents weren't even agents two years ago, but they used to require something called like a spot, they would do like a spot approval. And that stopped when they decided that that whole having that background check thing was not good for them. So agents calling me up and asking me, um, can I do FHA on the property? I'm like, why does nobody teach them this? Because it's the, they're laughing in there. It's the details of what a lot of real estate agents don't know. Yeah. And that's why you're so good at what you do. Well, everybody thinks that this is easy. They think that this is like a joke. Because they think it's easy money, you get a percentage. Well, you right, used to know what percentage you were getting, but it was kind of a thing where you sell it, you get a percentage, or it was there. Yeah. But a lot of these details, people don't realize what it really takes to make the deal happen. Because yeah. like you said before, if you put down your $1,500, right? You're putting in all this money and then the deal goes south, who are they gonna blame? You, the real right. estate agent, right? Because your client comes to you because they need that expert in the area of what it is. Yeah. And they expect you to know and to deliver that. 
and it's a, it's a lot of work to figure out the condos that actually do work. Well, have you taken a client from one situation that did not have reserves and they only had 3% and said, this is the reason why we can't do this at 3%, but this condo, we can do it and shift it up to a different situation? Yeah, we could. And the other thing that I'm, I'm very leery about, I'm very scared about, is, is that a lot of people are asking me questions like, is it true that my condo fees, I had this text yesterday, go up three times the amount that it is now? I'm like, and my answer was, it is possible, it could happen. So imagine it's at six and it goes to 1800. That's well. Here's my problem though, like, how does this happen? And then you, and you have no control over it. It's not even as if it's a private homeowner and you can try to switch insurance companies and, and mitigate those prices. You, you can't because mm -hmm. this is the condos situation, right? If their insurance goes up, if there's heaven forbid a hurricane that hits South Florida. I'm praying that we right? get another year away from this. We cannot withstand. Another insurance hike. Well, what's and happening? we're already getting it. It's That's already coming. It's already coming. Citizens has already approved it again. And, um, you know, a lot of people are getting kicked out of citizens because they can get something that's within 20% of citizens. And there's just, you know, and again, this is definitely like a branding conversation, right? But at the same time, it's like, again, I want people to know, though, that you need to take it all into consideration. If your insurance is going to go up on a house, it's surely going to go up on a condo. And by the way, if insurance goes up on anybody's place and you're a tenant, Somebody's got to absorb that. Right. If you're renting a, a right. private house, right, in the or, homeowner or, has or to a condo or whatever it is, the apartment, like somebody's got to absorb all these costs. So one way or another, whether you live in a rental and it's going to go up or you live in this and it's going to go up, like it's going to go up one way or another. Well, so what's your advice? Do you steer people away from condos? No, I don't steer them away, but I do tell them to take a look at the budget. Okay. Take a look That's at the fair. budget, see what it looks like. People ask for the minutes, read the last 12 months of the minutes, because that's going to tell you discussions of assessments, discussions of things that need to be remodeled, maybe that needs a roof. Also, when you look at the budget, the budget will tell you when they plan on putting that new roof on. Is it five years from now? Is it 10 years from now? Do they have enough money for that? The projections. Another question to ask is, is do they have, it's like basically a whole report and it costs them about five or $6,000 to do this. And you could have an HOA on top of it. You could be within a condo within a community. Yes. Right? So, so on top of that, you can have another layer of an HOA mm -hmm. yes. and those assessments can go up. Mm -hmm. So give you an example though, which this one stayed pretty stable for a really long time. Township in Coconut Creek, they have two. So you pay one to the township so that you can utilize their additional pools. They have a library. I'm sure those books are as old as dirt, but they have a <laughs> library over there. They have a gym and all that other stuff. That's been pretty stable. That's been about one, I think it's like 179 a quarter. So you divide that by three, that's not a big deal. And then you have each of the individual buildings and then some buildings you can rent in, some buildings you can't rent in, some buildings, you know, you have to wait two years, you have to wait one year. Some it's like every building has some, some buildings don't have a minimum down. Some buildings have been Freddie Fannie approved. Some buildings need 10% down, 12%, 12 is such a weird number, but I just had one, 12% down. Which is crazy. There's no rhyme or reason what sells and why it sells. And it just depends on the owner, the building, what it is, what people are looking for. So mm -hmm. you look at our Gen Z, all these kids that are coming out. I can't even say college because they can't afford to get in anywhere, but <laughs> newly married, looking for first starters, they're thinking a condo would be great, right? Yeah. I can't quite afford a house. Let me look at a condo. But then they can end up triple your fees, right? All these fees can go up from six, 12, 1800. And next thing you know, they could have had a house someplace else. Not necessarily because the fees are going up because of things that have to happen. Like intra so insurance. Insurance is, a is one of the major, the major part. contributors of this going on. So whether it happens in your rental, it happens in the condo, and it happens in your house, it's going to happen. Now, would you, would you say when you first got married, when you bought your first house, nobody even thought about roofs? Nobody thought about a roof. You never sure. worried about a roof. You never thought about a roof. You never thought about a repair. You never thought about it. When I sold 20 something years ago, a house in Fort Lauderdale with a 50 year old roof, I never even worried about representing my client that it wasn't doing a good job or I was gonna put them in a bad situation. Cause insurance never, they, people literally would be like, oh, let, let a hurricane come and take it, I'll get a new roof, right? Totally changed. 
So the thing is, is that when you bought that first house, were you budgeting for a roof in the future? No. No. But when that roof came, it came. It came, and there's nothing you can do about it. So obviously, you know, you know, I'm sure you were fortunate enough that your husband's career or your career had gotten to a point where you could afford that. But there's people that can't. But that's what the condo's doing. They're budgeting for a roof, so you're paying for it now. The problem mm. is, is that you're paying for something you might not own. Right. In ten when years. When it happens. Exactly. Yeah. So when I think about though, when we bought our house, oh my gosh. Back in 1999, I think, um, 90, 99, 90, whatever it was, for $240,000, what it sold for 27 years later, even with the new roof and everything else, the profit in real estate in South Florida is tremendous. Yes. And that's what you say to people all the time. If you didn't buy a house yesterday, the best time to buy something, or a house or a condo, is today yes. or tomorrow, because the South Florida market is a good market, right? It's a good investment mm -hmm. if you have the right real estate agent that gets you into the right neighborhood and you're looking at the demographics. But it's still, even with all the aggravation, at the end of the day, most people are making a sound investment. Yes, and let's look at it like this. In 2005, the market took a tank, right? And that went on until 2010, which was the best deals ever to be had was 2010. So if you look at it like this, right? That by the time 2015 came, customers across the board were coming to me saying, the market's gonna crash, the market's gonna crash. And you know what? If you look at over time, it's usually like 10 years, you know, of where you'll see the market doing, you know, it's little ups and downs, right? So, those people that sold in 2015 didn't really make anything. All my customers that bought back in 2010 and then call me back to sell it here now, whether it be 2010 or 2013 or 20 whatever it was that bought, they've doubled their money and all the people that got off the fence didn't make anything. So imagine, so what I tell people is, is I know it's a lot to swallow at first, but it's like anything, you'll get used to it. <laughs> it's so, true. So the moral of the story here today is everybody is that, I'm not saying that all condos are created equal, they're not. And you do need to have somebody that knows what they're looking at and knows how to really manage the whole situation and knows how to make sure you're not getting in a bad deal. So if you're looking to buy a condo, give me a call. I am a condo expert. I don't know how that happened, but it did happen somehow. Uh, you can call me at 954-650-0827 or you can go to my website at lauracell.com. And it's always great to give you guys some little extra information. Thank so you. have a great night and until next week. Thank you for tuning in for Making Money with Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. To join the conversation, call us at the studio, 888-994-4995-STUDIO-8, or contact Laura directly at 954-650-0827. Laura Sanders, a name you can trust. We look forward to seeing you next week.